The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Thank you for joining us for today's webinar, CCTV Analog to IP Migration. We just had a couple of uh, technical difficulties, so I um, uh, please uh, appreciate your patience for that. My name is Richard Bell, and I'm the National CCTV Product Manager at Alarm Corp. Just before we get started, let's run through some general housekeeping. Uh, you will notice that uh, you're muted. You will remain muted for the duration of the webinar. Just to ensure that you can uh, see the presentation and hear me, can you please click on the hand icon? That's great. I can see lots of hands. You can lower them now. Thanks. At any time, you can ask questions, and at the end of the webinar, I will answer those. Just remember to click the send after typing the question. Our topic covers the migration of analog CCTV to an IP platform. We're going to look at a number of the options available. It's not always a one-size-fits-all solution. You know, this is not the, for the project at hand, but also considering the expansion of the system in future, the systems tend to get larger, not smaller. You know, there's a lot of analogue out in the field today, and clients have invested heavily in the infrastructure. You know, and if they can take advantage of this during the migration to IP, you know, this helps not only costs, but more importantly, you had time to install the equipment and the changeover before um, from go to woe. You know, the cabling technology in an IP system you know, is different to analog, and there are various methods you know, available to get the, um, you know, the video stream into a recorder and to display on the other monitor you know, or multiple monitors. You know. A number of different manufacturers' products from Sony and, and Interlogix, to, to mention a couple, and their respective interfaces will be also covered in this webinar. The retrofit strategies and how a system is changed or upgraded is a major point in this migration, and the cabling topology is where a project can make a significant difference in the cost and time taken you know, to upgrade you know, the, the system. You know, you know, while discussing the situations of the end result, be it a hybrid design or a full analog integration into an NVR or a larger scale VMS, you know, has additional items to be incorporated, such as network switches, and you know, we are then starting to delve into you know, the realms of IT, you know, and you know, additional knowledge is required there. You know, will the system you know, be on its own dedicated network, or will it be shared on a corporate network? You know, you know, the associated knowledge you know, for IP addressing schemes, you know, number of ports required, bandwidth limitations are new areas that were not relevant in the, you know, the previously in the analog world. You know, integration with you know, other technologies such as alarm systems and access control um, is an area where an IP system can interface directly via the network rather than uh, low level uh, relay uh, connections. The long-term future, especially in terms of storage, is also an important decision. There are pros and cons for each, and now I'll be explaining um, so you're aware of the ramifications. Yeah. You know, analog recorders. You know, typically an analog recorder has been via a coax cable, be it you know RG59 or RG6, and a separate power feed. Power, you know, for cameras has been typically you know 12 volts DC or 24 volts AC. We'll go into this in more detail in coming slides. The integration of analog cameras can be done by a number of methods. You know, if the system is a standalone DVR, then in the majority of cases, all the cables have been run back to this location, and this makes it convenient for you know, the new interface equipment when uh, going into the upgrade. The retrofit 
scenario uses various transceivers and they can take advantage of longer cable runs um, typically known as a rip and replace um, type installation. You know, this is when all analog cameras are going to be replaced purely with an IP system through though the cabling structure is maintained from the existing installation. Yeah, the maximum recording resolution from an analog camera is at 4 SIF. While this does not have the same quality as today's IP cameras, it also has another benefit, it doesn't take up as much disk space. Yeah. The customer is able to uh, do the changeover with the analog cameras um, to a little more powerful NVR or NVMS, you know, and they will offer more features than appliance type DVRs you know, in previous uh, generations. The introduction, however, of IP cameras typically requires more hard drive storage. You know, these days, you know, NVRs and larger video management systems are flexible with disk drives and are able to be added to either directly uh, or via a network connection by what's known as a, a NAS, a network attached storage, or in the higher end systems with a SAN, a storage attached network. You know, the bottom line is that the customer does not need to invest in a large disk array at the start. Yeah. The smaller NVRs in most cases have user replaceable drives yeah, and they can be added to, you know, depending on the model and what the Interlogix uh, units that I um, will talk about, they can cater for up to 16 terabytes in the actual uh, unit itself. Yeah, one of the main obstacles when upgrading to an IP infrastructure is the coax and the cable runs you know, that exceed 100 metres. You know, 100 metres is the standard length that is for a Cat5, a Cat5e uh, connected IP camera. You know, and in order to comply with this, you know, if we don't exceed uh, that distance, we need to implement uh, field Ethernet switches uh, to keep within um, those boundaries. You know, there may be data, or more commonly today, you know, uh, PoE, which is power over Ethernet, uh, where a single Cat5 cable will be disused for not only the data, but providing power to the actual camera. You know, these switches, you know, the network switches that are in the field, are typically known as an edge switch, because that's what's connecting the endpoint of the camera, and are available in various uh, sizes, 8, 16, 24, and extend, can expend up to 48 uh, ports in a single device. You know, these edge switches are then connected back to a core switch at the head end, which is typically a larger, more powerful uh, unit with, um, that has the processing um, speed to be able to handle all the edge switches coming back into it. You know, and they're normally connected back to it either on a copper network, but uh, typically these days on fibre. Uh, which allows for longer runs between uh, the distances uh, if it's a large site. You know, in the upcoming slides, we're going to look at various methods using coax cabling and how this works with modern IP systems, you know, as each site has got its own particular challenges. The other major benefit going to an IP solution is that from either an NVR or a larger VMS, there are more benefits as a typically a, a software driven device running on a server um, and or a powerful um, workstation. You know, the control of these you know, uh, workstations with the client you know, sitting on the network offers the user more flexibility and you know, can be uh, tailored to the specific um, environment for you know, loading dock situations where cameras are restricted to not all users all the way up to the security manager who has got um, the whole ray at his fingertips. You know, you know, these workstations, you know, however, even if they've got their flexibility, you know, the system integrator, you know, he needs to be aware of the network limitations. You know, this is where we start to require some IT knowledge um, about how they are communicating on the network. You know, it's not just a matter of having you know, 50 cameras on the network and being able to display these you know, at one time. You know, uh, network bandwidth um, 
is a very important um, feature, you know, and what actually has to be done and what's available to it, especially if it's going to be on a uh, shared corporate network and what the uh, IT department of that particular company may allow you to do it. But, you know, we're going to cover that in more detail in a later webinar. Now let's uh, look at some of the, um, the boxes, you know, that we can use for doing some of the upgrading uh, for going from this analogue to IP migration. We'll start with the, uh, the simplest uh, scenario, which is a one-to-one -one, um, uh, replacement. You know, coax, you know, at one end where the camera has been, and you'll see that it's only using the coax and there's no other power uh, for it. You know, when they say less is more, it is possible to get rid of the uh, figure eight that's probably had the 12 volts or 24 volts AC and just use one coax for the um, camera from start to finish. But, you know, we don't just have one camera on a system, you know, it's you know, going to be multiples, you know, how many there are, there might be tens, twenties or, you know, 50 plus cameras. So the actual devices themselves, you know, they're available in multi-port uh, configurations. You know, the diagram on the left, you know, shows a four-port device and the right side diagram is a 16-port um, a unit. The eight slash 16 channel units are typically more popular because of the uh, number of cameras that are on a analog system. Um, if it's in a DVR, a 16 channel unit allows it to uh, be changed over relatively easily. They're also um, built in a standard you know, 1RU rack mount design. So for the installer uh, install, uh, putting these in, it's a lot more elegant solution. Um, so they don't have to sort of sit on a shelf or you know be cable tied to the side of a um, a wall or whatever it's going to be uh, be done. But you know you'll see the right hand side unit that's got the uh, connectors on the front, and they are the Ethernet connections and that out for each of the IP cameras, and then they will be then connected to a network switch, be it a just a normal data switch or a, a PoE switch. On the back of the, uh, the unit that's uh, there, you know, it has the normal BNC connectors. And typically, you know, when you've got the DVR that's being replaced, you know, the cabling can just go from one device to another. You know, you may just need to do a bit of, you know, shuffling around, you know, um, moving the device um, up one or two um, RU in the rack. But, you know, it avoids the need to... Uh, change your cabling a great deal and hence at the end of the day, you know, installation and time um, for getting the new unit in. Now this next device is a really uh, exciting uh, unit. You know, it helps solve a number of problems um, that may be out, you know, in the field. You know, as I mentioned before, you know, systems tend to grow, you know, they don't get small, they get larger. And you know you might have the case where you've got a, just a single run um, coax out to um, a car park area, and it's not possible to install a cable, or it's not possible easily to install additional cable at a cost-effective rate. Now this device here, um, it effectively multiplexes four IP cameras over a single coax. So you can just do a one-to-one -one replacement and that there. But if the customer wants another two or three cameras, they're able actually to do that with the existing cable that's uh, around. You know, the other side is that, you know, depending on what's happened, you know, a lot of uh, people it's in commercial environments have got other contractors that may have damaged um, cabling that has been previously put in. And again, it's not cost effective to replace it. So something like this, you know, you might have one damaged coax um, there, but the other ones are fine um, and in perfect working order. So you can discard that um, unit and replace it with an IP camera and that solves the problem without having to you know, pull in a complete new cable and that for it. Each of these cameras are able to be individually uh, monitored and managed. Um, it's not as if uh, it just plugs in and it's uh, one uh, box that uh, shares it. And you know, they can get to it you know, via typically a, a browser uh, for administration of the um, respective device. We're going to jump to a Sony solution and now this is a Sony Ipella, what they do with their hybrid. 
um, a unit. They um, have a, uh, a box again. It uses a single coax, but it's slightly different that uh, it also uh, sends both the analog and the IP uh, signal up the uh, one coax. And this is a very um, convenient solution for doing a changeover without uh, the stress um, of time constraints. You know, and we'll go and look at uh, each of this you know, in a stage solution in the coming slides. Typically, in the uh, previous slides where we had the uh, transmitter and a receiver unit using the coax um, on a one-to-one -one basis, or we've got the, the one-to-many uh, unit. You know, Sony have worked with uh, Ultronics and they've created a um, solution with their cameras where the transmitter device that's you know, shown on the left here is not required in the Sony environment because it's actually built inside the camera. So the camera does not need to have any um, add-on devices to it and for all intents and purposes it just looks like a standard camera with a BNC connection but it does give both the analog and IP out of that um, coax and that unit. So this makes it a lot easier for installation uh, and more convenient in that forum. It also on the uh, receiver on the back it has loop through devices and this can be put in place you know, next to the existing uh, analog equipment, you know, be it a DVR or whatever. And you can keep the existing infrastructure running while at the same time putting in the IP solution uh, to coexist at the same time and get that all programmed and running for the client. We'll look through a couple of the diagrams as typically of a, of a stage installation of what actually would be uh, to be done. Again, a lot of people will be familiar with this. It's a fairly simple diagram, you know. But in this case, you know, you're looking. You've got 300 meter coaxial cable run. Again, that's longer than the 100 meters where we mentioned about the Cat5 you know, over a, um, the run for there. But it's not a problem using the Sony the hybrid um, IPELA solution here. What typically is the case is that the hybrid receiver is the first device that actually gets installed. The one shown here in the diagram is a four port, but it can be the 16 port that was shown a couple of slides back. This hybrid receiver is mounted you know, in close proximity to the existing uh, analog equipment. And as I said, it's got the loop in and loop out uh, scenarios. So once you've got that powered up, you can actually change the cabling and that over. So one feed comes directly out and just runs the system as normal. When that's the case, each camera can just be uh, changed on a one-on-one -on -one basis. And there is no dead downtime you know, um, for a minimal loss of you know, recording time. Um, the power in this case is still required using the figure eight, unlike the other one where we can shoot the PoE uh, up the coax. Though this one does use the coax and a separate power source and that for it. But it just maintains so you can just do it. It's a nice and clean installation without any um, time constraints and that for it. So yeah, you know, the camera's been replaced. You've got analog data that's coming back up out of the receiver into the switcher to the monitors and everything is as it was when the contractor first were, uh, walked on the site. Again, from the actual receiver itself, it is also spinning out IP data, which could be into um, a, just a standalone network video recorder and IP appliance or a larger VMS, it doesn't matter. But you've got that stream and everything's just working, coexist side by side in that forum. When all of the cameras have been changed over, and the IP side is being commissioned, you've got all the profiles set up and it's recording you know, uh, there, you can effectively you know, remove the analog component from the system. However, you may want to leave it in place um, running for you know, 30 to 90 days because of any footage that may be required for any incident is still on the old um, platform. You know, that way it just keeps it there for, for a convenience without having to you know, uh, plug everything back in and power it all up. 
and then once it's past its you know, useful time of expiring, um, it then can be decommissioned and removed uh, from the rack. This, uh, the Sony series is it's commonly known, it's the Z series. That's the hybrid um, solution. And there's a multiple number of devices um, to cater for um, all requirements. There are full body cameras there. There are dome cameras, uh, vandal domes. And the hybrid solution also caters for PTZs. So the data um, control cable for the PTZ is also sent up the coax. So there's no need for any additional data cabling in it for it. So it caters for basically all requirements of what you're actually going to need for um, a changeover. Okay, we'll, we'll look at another um, solution on a you know, small to medium size um, migration. Uh, the recorder shown here, so Interlogic's a DVR60. You know, it caters for both analog and uh, IP in the one recorder. It's effectively got you know encoders you know, built into it, so you know they can just plug on. And as shown there, it's a 24 channel device, and you can do 16 analog and up to 8 IP. Um, you can mix around, changing on um, the size and for it, but it depends on bandwidth limitations and you know uh, putting those into the respective calculators to see what it caters for. You know, this particular unit here, you know, can have up to um, 12 terabytes. Um, on board, and it's um, a very good solution for people who still want to maintain their existing analog, the costs they've got in there, but still you know, get the best out of a new IP with the enhanced resolution that they offer. If we move up to the next step, and we go to its bigger brother, um, the uh, TVN21. Uh, you know, this is a uh, new recorder that's uh, only been recently released. And it's available in 8, 16, and 32 channel configurations. The uh, size of this has got more processing power inside the actual recorder. And it can handle um, various um, cameras all the way up to 5 megapixel. However, you know, if you've still, the client still has analog uh, cameras that they want to use, they can actually add encoders to this box as well. They're external encoders, unlike the um, TVR60, which had uh, uh, and it built into it. But the external ones here come in both 4, 8, and 16 channel. And the photo on the bottom right um, shows a um, 16 channel unit on the rear connections. Again, B and C, uh, so that they are convenient for the um, upgrade if it's had a on a, um, a DVR. So they can just plug on there, and then you've got uh, your network interface uh, on the right-hand side that will then plug into the Ethernet network for it. But now, once we go past these things, you know, more and more of these devices are getting put on networks. You know, and you know, the integration is sought after by customers. You know, um, typically these are known as high-level interfaces or HLIs, as they're being referred to. They're becoming more pre prevalent in the marketplace. You know, you know, in the Interlogics range, for example, you know, there's a number of HLIs that exist you know, for the analog, you know, TVR40 and 41, you know, as well as on the IP side with the TVN20, uh, um, and they uh, directly interface to the TCOM Challenger. Um, the new TVN21 is in development, and it's scheduled for release shortly. The integration of third-party cameras with their codecs uh, is expanding across the industry. You know, proprietary formats are dying, and you know, manufacturers just need to be um, flexible to realise that you know it's a an open marketplace out there. So, you know, saying that it's just not a matter of just getting an IP camera and just plugging it in to a, a PoE, PoE switch and it's going to work. You know, analog you actually had that because it was just a composite video signal out and just had a BNC connection on the back and that was it. But uh, these days with uh, more common, if they don't have their own specific codecs, you know, ONVIF and um, the more uh, latest release with Profile S and the support across the industry of that makes it a lot easier um, for customers to uh, integrate cameras. They, they may have multiple um, different manufacturer IP cameras and they need to take those and that in. Um, 
to the system rather than you know, forcing them to uh, migrate them to a particular uh, manufacturer. But you know, saying all that, you know, when the customer he's going to have his analog and his IP, and um, sometimes you know they like to have the latest and greatest and that for it, but the and uh, the analog can only go so far in terms of its quality as what you're going to um, see in that on the screen. Um, there's no sort of magic CSI um, uh, that things can be done that you actually zoom in and enhance it. It is only what is available. As I said earlier, the, the maximum that you can get, you know, is a four SIF out of an analog, you know, versus IP um, where it's a 720 you know, full HD running at uh, 1920 by 1080, you know, or three or five megapixel, you know, cameras, you know, for even enhanced detail. So the two images here do show uh, the the difference between them, and even though it's the next one, which I'm just going to pull up now, you know, highlights it more. You know, it's still clear on the right-hand side to make out the um, the detail versus you know the very uh, grainy photo uh, on the left. But again, you know, customers, you know, they're looking if if they've got a lot of amount of uh, infrastructure uh, with analog. You know, it is a stepping stone that you're actually not having to force them. You know, and they can budget for these over the particular time frame and have IP in the newer, more important areas, and the analogs um, they can still maintain and that for it. You know, I hope this you know, brief overview and the technology about you know, analog to IP migration is beneficial. You know, there's um, a lot of products out there and there's you know, more than one way to skin the cat. You know, um, you know, if we uh, can help you um, and you've got a particular requirement, you know, you know, please you know, contact us. You know, um, you know, you can look at our website. The details uh, below. You know, subscribe to our Pulse uh, newsletter, uh, and that will be the, sent to you automatically. You know, or contact you know one of our representatives. You know, Jeff Rushton for New South Wales, the ACT in Queensland. Diane Brazil, also for NSW ACT in Queensland. Myself, or Steve Dinger for Victoria, South Australia, and WA. Um, I'll leave that screen there for a, a few moments um, in case you need to jot down any phone numbers or email addresses. And also you can find us um, on uh, Facebook, uh, LinkedIn and Twitter for the various feeds and uh, information that we uh, put up there on a regular basis. You know, Alarm Corps will be conducting regular webinars for the remainder of the year. You know, every third Thursday we'll be holding an intrusion-based uh, webinar, and the uh, dates below. The next one being the 19th of June, uh, covering uh, central switches. You know, a switch for every application. And every second Wednesday, CCTV webinar. And the one for next month, we'll be uh, looking at camera lenses, um, standard day-night megapixel, and which ones to choose, and the pros and cons um, of each. You know, when you attend one of our webinars, you'll have access to special promotions. You know, for purchases made online through our e-commerce platform, you know, please enter the promo code you know, uh, shown on the screen during the checkout to receive an additional 10% off your already discounted trade prices. And this applies to nearly all of Alarm Corp's product ranges uh, with a few exceptions you know, as listed. So let's answer some of the questions. If you have one, now's the time to type it and uh, hit send. Um, we'll just uh, uh, wait uh, at the moment. Okay, these ones that popped up. Yeah, so yeah, you know, if we're using uh, coax style adapters for IP uh, cameras, you know, what distance can these uh, transmit data over? Yeah, you know, the, the overall length, you know, depends on whether it's used in a, um, a PoE pass-through type configuration or if it's powered. You know, you know, more than likely you're going to have a separate power source there from the previous uh, analog um, equipment, being at either 12 volt DC or 24 volt AC. 
Um, you know, if you're using the, the, the power supply, you know, that allows for long distances you know, to be achieved. You know, however, you know, if the cable runs limited to say around 300 meters, you know, it's possible that the coax can just transmit the PoE power as well. Um, and if you're doing that, then it just makes it a cleaner type installation that you actually uh, can um, uh, make redundant. You know, the additional power supplies if they're not needed, because the cameras will be uh, getting powered through the PoE switch uh, directly. Are there PDZs that will work over PoE with the um, extra figure eight? Um, not sure when that question came in, but when we saw the uh, the Sony um, Ipella uh, range like that hybrid um, solution, you know, that works um, with its control lines um, with uh, the coax for both the IP control and the analog, and it has the, um, the it does need the figure eight to require the power, you know. Uh, I can see it. You know, it's, it's like without the figure eight. Um, there, there is a, um, there is one that is available that I haven't got the information that here, but I can see the person who was asked the question out there, um, and I'll follow that up um, with that to with you um, directly. The another question about this sort of interface you get with the TCOM panels. Um, it's a it's an um, Ethernet connection, and it's configured you know, like both the TCOM will be need to be sit on the network with its uh, IP interface, and then the same with the uh, the TVR uh, for it. There are versions that uh, run with um, Security Commander, um, and I haven't got the latest ones that are actually you know, uh, online with the particular models of the um, the TVN21, what it support, but uh, it is looking at, um, I know initially with Security Commander um, and also possibly with Force Field as well, but I will follow that up and answer that person's one uh, directly and give them all the particular versions. Oh, no, another question, you know, what can be done to manage these DVRs, especially if there's multiple units to be upgraded and the customer um, is doing stage changeover? You know, it's a good question you know, because at the end of the day, you know, somebody has to you know, make their life as easy as possible for the replacement. And if I use a 16 channel as an example, um, you know, Interlogix, they provide a management piece of software that's free uh, to be downloaded for all of their recorders. You know, this can be from the small four channel analog unit all the way up to the 32 channel IP TVN21. You know, you know, the cameras from all these systems are able to coexist on the same management system providing they're all connected to the network and it's just a matter of um, a simple drag and drop. You've got a tree on the left hand side that expands with the recorders and the various cameras and you can just click and drag those to um, a right hand pane and you can actually have various flavours uh, of the screen, whether it's a 2x2, two 3x3 by two, three by three or 4x4 four four in that layout. Right. When using Cat5 type cables for IP cameras, do you need to consider voltage drop, as was the case with you know, Figure 8 with analogs? That's a good question. You know, you know, the runs that are not as long when dealing with um, IP in a Cat5 environment, you know, being only 100 metres being the max. But, you know, typically, uh, a standard dome camera will use probably in the vicinity of you know, 6 to 12 watts, you know, depending on the manufacturer. You know, and even at the maximum run, you know, the standard being you know, 15.4 watts, you know, at, at 100 metres, you know, it's probably going to drop to maybe just under around the 13 watts. So you're still within tolerance for that sort of range. You know, you know, if I go on a little bit further about that, like in the case of PoE Plus. Now, some of you may not have heard of the, the, that term. Uh, PoE Plus is a later um, higher powered unit that provides you know, 30 watts. And you know this is typically required for units that have got um, heaters in there or uh, PTZs. Um, again, you've got a, a larger um, voltage drop that if you're going right at the limit of 100 meters, it's probably going to drop to 25 or 26 watts. Um, you know switches that provide PoE plus you know are still relatively expensive. You know and considering that you know you've only got a probably uh, 
you haven't got as many PTZs compared to fixed cameras on there. It's not a very cost-effective way to probably you know, to have that uh, scenario. So I would still probably have an external power source for the PTZs, you know, um, and just have uh, the data going into the network cable and that for it. Uh, that's another question. NVRs in general seem to have uh, no option for analog monitors. You know, um, e.g., a public display monitor. Um, you know, what's available? Um, the two that I uh, showed on the presentation, the TBR60, um, it's got three outputs. Um, it can have um, a spot monitor with a local analog with a BNC. Um, it's got two of those, and it's also got the VGA connection. The later um, unit with the TBN21 going IP, um, it's also got the, a VGA output and it also has a HDMI um, output um, directly built into it so you can actually um, attach uh, a monitor there. I think that covers all the questions that um, we've looked at in that forum. Yeah, like just want to summarise a few things like uh, as checkpoints you know to look at. You know the, the image quality. You know you still need to keep in mind that you know the maximum that you've got on analog is a four SIF. So even though you're integrating it into an IP solution via way of an encoder, um, you're still not increasing the resolution of the camera. It's still staying at that. It's in a more convenient location, and you're getting some of the other benefits and the management from the modern day uh, VMS systems, but um, that's also still at 4 SIF. You know, you know, the installation parameters, again, you know, the smart way of you know, looking at the, um, the site um, from some of the methods we've had there, you know, the one-to-one -one encoders, you know, the one-to-many with the four-channel encoder over the coax, um, you know, they are um, a very important points uh, that can help make a successful installation, both in terms of dollars, time, and deployment. You know, to have a you know a win-win you know, for all. Um, the storage considerations, again, as the you know, four SIF um, is um, smaller in size, is also smaller in the storage. So initially, you know, a client does not need to probably invest in a large amount of storage, but you know, they can have the ability to grow if it's on a VMS of uh, with an integrated server. And for and the integration with uh, third-party uh, products is becoming more the norm in that these days. And it's always probably one of the most important uh, points is the budget. You know, you know, having the migration opportunities. You know, um, for this to uh, use the coax and existing infrastructure there is a very important point um, that you know can't be uh, stressed enough and you know can be the difference between being successful and winning the project and um, uh, or losing it to one of your competitors so you know please give us a call bounce any ideas and that from us um, if you need any advice um, more than uh, happy you know, to assist at any stage um, uh, um, drop us a line or uh, an email Thanks for attending our webinar. We appreciate the time taken for your schedule today and we hope you found it beneficial. We look forward to seeing you at the next webinar. I hope you uh, enjoy the remainder of your day. Goodbye.